Hello everyone, welcome back. Hope you are doing good. As per your request, here I am with the programs based on looping. Hope you are clear with the looping statements in Python. There are two types of loop. First is for loop and the second one is while loop. When we know how many times we need to execute the loop, that time we will be using for loop. For loop can be used in two ways with range function which generates a sequence of numbers. Even you can use membership operator in and not in when you need to iterate over collection. Then what about while loop? Generally the while loop is used in the scenario where the execution of the loop depends on the counter variable or even you can use it to create infinite loop. Alright theory will be easy to understand but it will be clear when we actually write some programs. So let's start writing some programs. Here is the first one. In this program we need to accept n values from the user then we have to enter that many numbers. The number which is ending with 5 or 0 it will get increased by 10 otherwise we have to print the number as it is. Before directly writing the code first understand the logic of the program. First of all we need to enter the count of the numbers for that n is mentioned so let's keep it same. After that the loop will be executing n times. We know how many times we need to execute the loop so we can go ahead with for loop. Let's take one variable and using range function we can execute the loop as many times as we want. In this program we need to execute the loop n times. Alright now we have to enter n numbers. Let's consider one value for n it will be 3. It means we have to enter 3 numbers. Suppose the numbers are 15, let's take 12 and the third number will be 10. In this way we got these 3 numbers. Now we need to check whether it is getting end with 5 or 0. It means we are interested with the last digit of the number. How to separate out the digits? We can take the modulus of the number by 10. In this way we will get the remainder ultimately it will be the last digit of this number. Then using if we can check whether it is 5 or 0. If it is 5 or 0 we have to add 10 to this number. And after adding it we will print it. If not we will print the number as it is. Hope you understood the logic. Now pause the video and try it yourself. Alright come to VS code. Here is the python file. Let's close the explorer and start writing code. The first step is to take the number of values. For that the variable we will keep it same. Enclose the input statement in integer because the number should be integer. Here is the input statement. Let's write the prompt. Enter number of values. Come to the next step. Now we are going to write the loop for i in range of n. Hope you are well familiar with the range function. If you don't mention the starting it will be 0 and end limit is exclusive. Ultimately this loop will get executed from 0 to n minus 1. The next step is to take the numbers. For that also we will be taking input function and we need to enclose it in integer. Here the message will be enter number. In input statement also you can use f string to format it. We got the number. Now it's time to check if the number ends with 5 or 0. For that we will take the modulus by 10 and compare it with 5. In the same way we need to compare it with 0. So number modulus 10 is equals to 0. In this way we will get the last digit. If it is 5 or 0 we need to add 10 to the number. So the new number will be previous number plus 10. After adding it here itself we will print it. So let's use print function to print it. You can use f string here is the modified number. Let's write the variable name in the placeholder which is indicated by curly brackets. Alright we are done with it. What is the else part now? If it is not getting end with 5 or 0 the number will be as it is. It means we will get the original number. Let's copy this print statement and let's edit it. Here we will get the original number itself. I think we are done with the programs. Now let's check the output. 
the cursor is waiting for the input we need to enter number of values let's enter three numbers the first number is 15 the second number is 12 and the third number is 10 look at the output the first number is getting end with 5 that's why 10 got added and it becomes 25 the second number is not getting end with 5 or 0 that's why the number is as it is you understood the output for the third number. The third number is getting end with 0. That's why it got incremented by 10. Try out for different values. Alright then. Let's move ahead to the second program. This is an important program you may get in exam. Read the question carefully. You need to calculate some of the digits of a number. That too using while loop. Why we are using while loop here? Because we don't know how many times we need to execute the loop. Because the number can have different count of digits. It can be 2 digit number, 3 digit number, 4 digit number and so on. Alright then, it's time to understand the logic of this program. The first step is nothing but input. Let's assume one 3 digit number 123. So it will be easy to work out on that. You know what we are going to do here. First we need to separate the digits of a number. Then add them. And finally this sum we need to print. In the previous program itself we got to know how to separate out the digit. That is nothing but taking modulus by 10. The same approach we are going to use here. Then let's dry run and understand the execution of each pass. It's an repetitive task to segregate the digits and add them. So for that we will use loop and here are the three statements which we are writing in the loop. So let's understand the values which we will get with these expressions in every pass. Alright here is the pass 1. The first statement is number modulus 10. Here is the number. Now you need to divide it by 10. 10 ones are 10. Remainder is 2. Now 3 will come down. 10 twos are 20. The remainder is 3. With modulus we get the remainder. Ultimately digit will be 3 here. In this way we could separate out one digit. We need to calculate the sum of the digits. So we need to keep on adding the digits. But initially we don't have any other number to get added with 3. Then what we will do? Initialize the sum to 0. Ultimately sum will be 0 plus 3 means 3. We understood easily how to extract the last digit. Now we need to extract this 2. For that we will reduce the number. We are dividing the number by 10. Look at the quotient. Now the number will be reduced and the new number will be 12. Please note we are using floor division because division operator in python gives the result in the form of float. Alright let's move ahead to the second pass. Now the new number is 12. Take the modulus of 10. The remainder will be 2. It means we could separate this digit 2. Now let's add it to the sum. The previous sum is 3 now. 3 plus 2 will be 5. The same approach of reducing the number we need to do. Alright, when the new number 12 will get divided by 10, the quotient will be 1. This process will get repeated until the value of number becomes 0. And look at the number, it is not 0 still. So let's check out the values in the third pass. Now the new number is 1 modulus by 10. Remainder will be 1. In this way we could separate out 1. Next task is to add it. Previous sum is 5 plus 1 will be 6. Here is the next expression. New number is 1. If we divide it by 10 we will get 0. Look at the value of number. Now it is 0. So the loop will stop. And following this logic we got the required output. We will print the sum of the digits which is nothing but 6. Hope you understood this logic too. Try to write the code because if you write yourself, you will develop the skill of writing programs. Don't worry about the errors because by making mistakes only we learn. Alright, here is the python file. Let's start writing the code. The first step is to take the input. Enclose input statement in integer because we need one integer value. Let's write prompt. Enter number. We need to use while loop according to the question. While number is greater than 0, the loop will get executed. In the first statement, we are extracting the digit. For that, we are taking number modulus 
10. Then we need to calculate the sum of the extracted digit. For that we are taking one variable sum and adding the digit to it. Let's initialize sum to 0. In the third expression we need to reduce the number. For that we are dividing the number by 10. Use floor division here. In this way we calculated the sum of the digit. It's time to print. You can use f string for formatting it. Sum of the digits. Here is the placeholder. We got that in a sum variable. Let's execute and check the output. I am going to enter the same number 123. Look at the output. We got the sum of the digits equals to 6. Try out this program for different number. Based on looping you can practice n number of programs. Then for more practice let's do one more program. Read the question carefully. We need to create infinite loop. With while we can create infinite loop by writing while true. True will be always true. That's why it is infinite. This loop is accepting the numbers from the user until negative value is given. So when this loop will get terminated when the value is negative. So inside the loop we will keep on taking the number. If number is less than 0 we will come out of the loop using break statement. Wow, in this way we understood the first line. Now come to the second line. Count and print the number values which are divisible by both 3 and 5. Alright then, let's continue inside the loop itself. If the number is divisible by 3 means if we take modulus by 3, the remainder should be 0. In the same way, we will take modulus with 5 and will check with 0. Look at the condition carefully. We are using AND operator. It should be divisible by 3 as well as by 5. And these type of numbers we have to count. How to write the logic for count? For that you can take one variable count and initialize it with 0. Then inside this if we can keep on incrementing it by 1. In this way we will get the count of the numbers which are divisible by both 3 and 5. Hope you understood the logic. I will repeat my suggestion. Please try to write the code yourself. Hope you have at least tried something. Let's write the code together. Directly we need to write the while loop. While true. While true loop is an infinite loop. In the loop we need to keep on taking the numbers. For that we will use input function. Let's wrap it in integer because we need to convert it to integer. Here is the prompt. Enter a number. This loop will terminate when you enter negative value. So you can write that message here. Negative to stop. Alright, let's write that condition. If number is less than 0, we will break. With the break, we can come out of the loop immediately. Break terminates the loop as it encounters. So the termination of the loop is done. Now we need to check whether the number is divisible by both 3 and 5. For that we will use one more if. If number modulus by 3 is equals to 0 and we are using AND operator because both the conditions should be true. Hope you know the working of logical operators. The second condition is number should be completely divisible by 5. So the remainder should be 0. If this condition satisfies, we will keep on incrementing the value of count by 1. You can write simply count equals to count plus 1. The main logic is done and we got the count also. It's time to print it. That we will print outside the loop because we need the final count. So let's use print statement. You can use f string or you can write in a simple way. Let's write the message count of numbers divisible by 3 and 5. Alright, we are done with the program. It's time to check the output. Let's enter some random numbers. The first number I am going to enter 5, second will be 3. Let me enter 15 which is divisible by both 5 and 3. Now I am going to write one negative number to stop this loop. Look at the output. Out of these 3 values, only 15 was divisible by 3 and 5. That's why the count is 1. Try out for different numbers. 
Hope with the explanation for three programs you understood the usage of for and while loop. If not, there are lot of programs I have already uploaded when we were practicing the programs from the practical list. In that we have discussed the program to calculate sum of the series. Total four series we have practiced. Not only that, there is a video in which we are checking the number is a perfect number, Armstrong number, or palindrome number. Even in one video, we have discussed the number is prime or composite. Along with that, we understood in one video how to calculate GCD as well as LCM of two integers. In all those program, we have used while loop as well as for loop. But there is one more concept while we are dealing with looping that is nested loop that you will easily understand in this program where we are printing patterns using nested loop. So I will suggest you to go through those videos. With that, you will get clear understanding of the looping statements. Apart from the practical list, there are some programs which are based on the random module. In this also, we are using the looping statement. Here is one video on the number guessing game as well as how to generate OTP and password. If you need to have some fun with the looping as well as conditional statement, here are some of the shots where we are writing rock paper scissor game, hangman game, and dice simulator. So don't forget to check out all those videos. If we are going through the looping statements, then how to leave this calculator program? Hope you have gone through the video where we have discussed total 10 programs based on conditional statement if. In that video, we have practiced this calculator program. Now let's improve it. You know on the screen always the menu will be displayed and from the menu you will choose your required order. The same thing we are gonna do always the menu will be displaying for that we will be using while loop. So let's modify the same program and make it more practical. Alright, this is our original program. Now let's modify it. We will enclose the whole code inside while loop because we need to keep on executing this menu. Let's write while true. We are going to design one infinite loop. Let's change the indentation. Select everything and press tab. This is an infinite loop. We need to come out of the loop for certain criteria. When we will come out of the loop? When we will enter the choice 5. So let's add elif. Elif choice is equals to 5. We can keep this message as it is. Let's add break here. Now this will work fine. If you want to add one more else part, you can add for the invalid choice. If apart from 1 to 5, user will enter some other value, then the message will get displayed. That is invalid choice. Try it again. So let's print it. Let's execute and check the output. Look at the menu. We are getting it. Let's enter the first number. Here is the second number. Out of the given choice, I am going to enter 1. We got addition equals to 5. Now again the menu is getting displayed. That is what we want. The program is asking for the input. Let's enter the same number. This time I want to check whether this exit option is working fine or not. Let's enter 5. You can see here we got exited from the program. You can modify this program in a different way. So try out it. One more change you can do if you don't want to take these numbers inside the loop, you can place it outside. In this way, you need not enter the numbers again and again. Let me decrease the font and show you the whole program. It will look like this. This also will work fine. According to your need, you can modify this program. So let's enter the first number. And here is the second number. You are getting the menu. Now you can choose from the menu. Let's try for the second choice this time. The subtraction is equals to 5. Alright, we are going to wrap this video. Hope you found this video helpful. If so, please like it and share it with your friends. In the next video, we are going to continue to cover the important questions. The next video will cover the important questions from the string manipulation chapter. So stay tuned for the upcoming videos. I will see you in the next video.